Hello everybody. Well, here we are again. <laughs> now, I did intend to go and do some mudlarking today, but I'm almost certain that the rivers will still be in flood because of all the rain and snow that we've had. Because Sheffield is in a valley and obviously everything drains into the rivers, but we'll find that out when we get there. Now, if the rivers are in flood, <laughs> I'll have to go for plan B, although I'm not entirely sure what plan B is yet, but it will be something to do with the Industrial Revolution. And at the end of the video we will be doing the results for the giveaway, so stay tuned. But before we go any further, Tom from Cheshire Metal Detecting has been doing some videos on teaching people how to paint. Now personally I can't paint. I haven't got the faintest idea. I've tried and it looks rubbish. <laughs> but I mentioned to Tom that my wife is a self-taught artist and she's done some nice pictures, paintings type thing. So Tom said why don't I show you good people out there one of the paintings that my wife's done. So I will do. And down here we've got one which is this one here. I hope the reflection's not too bad. Um, she did this quite a while ago and I believe it's somewhere in Venice. She has signed it down here, Elaine. Um, so anyway, that's what my wife does in her spare time, amongst other things. And I just thought I'd show it you. Okie dokie. Right, we'll get a bit further boys and girls and I'll see you when we get to wherever we are going. Ra my good friends, we've arrived at our first destination and as you can probably tell, we're in a cemetery. But this is no ordinary cemetery. It was built by the Victorians in about 1836 and all the people that are in here were in some way involved in the Industrial Revolution. There are steel manufacturers, industrialists, cutlery manufacturers, and even ivory traders. Now it has to be said that if you were a poor person you wouldn't even have got through the gates. So anyway, let's go and take a look around. Now the building that's in front of me just here is some sort of huge mausoleum. Now I, I don't actually know what it was used for to be honest with you but it's an absolutely enormous building obviously built in the Roman style or possibly even Greek maybe it was used to hold services in I'm not entirely sure but it's a very very impressive building now this monument in front of me is a perfect example of how wealthy the people were that were buried here the inscription says to the memory of Mr. William Parker of Sheffield, who was a merchant, departed this life on the 4th of February 1837. I can't quite see the age. And it says this monument was erected by the merchants and manufacturers of Sheffield, who were connected with the gentleman in question. And as you can see, the monument itself is absolutely huge absolutely enormous so once again it just shows you how wealthy the people were that were buried in this cemetery and here's another classic example of the expense the Victorians went to when they were actually burying their loved ones this one is absolutely huge uh, it's got some sort of figure on the top kneeling maybe reading from a Bible something like that and this one is dedicated to someone called James Nicholson and I think his wife is also buried here and she was called Sarah now you may have noticed it started to snow quite heavily so I'm not going to hang around in here much longer anyway the monument you can see behind me is dedicated to the first family um, I think there's two or three people buried in there or under there somewhere now the Firth family were very famous in Sheffield especially during the Industrial Revolution they owned 
steelworks that covered absolutely acres and acres of land and they were so wealthy it was frightening anyway this is where they buried okie dokie we'll get a bit further right boys and girls well this beast of a machine that you can see in front of you is called a Bessima converter a huge machine that was used for converting pig iron into high quality steel but I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a few seconds right boys and girls well as you can see behind me is the Bessima converter which actually played a very important part in the industrial revolution um, as I said it was invented by a chap called Bessima his first name was Henry in the 1800s and he was actually knighted by Queen Victoria for this particular machine now it was famous for converting pig iron into high quality steel which obviously made it a very popular machine because up to then they had no other method of making huge quantities of high quality steel now it's a little known fact but over in America in Pittsburgh uh, which if you don't know Pittsburgh in America is very famous for steel in fact <laughs> Pittsburgh is also very famous for the amount of bridges that it's got I think there's something like 446 bridges in Pittsburgh anyway over in Pittsburgh a chap called William Kelly was working on a very similar idea but unfortunately Mr Kelly ran out of money so he never got to finish the project whereas obviously Mr Bessemer did now the Bessemer converter actually came just before the open half furnace which produced even more steel than that did anyway just a bit of history for you about the Bessemer converter and we'll move along now then boys and girls now the machine in front of you is uh, actually a crushing mill uh, for fire clay now the mill was used for grinding what they call ganister rock which was then made into a paste and it was used to seal the joints inside furnaces just like the massive Bessemer converter that you've just seen it was a heat proof lining uh, and the paste stopped the hot liquid steel from melting the metal container that the Bessemer converter was made out of anyway that's what that's for so we'll get a bit further now on this particular part of the river is where an old mill used to stand the water came down the river and then it was diverted into various channels where it was fed into the water wheels now we'll just go across the other side of the bridge and I'll show you where the water wheel used to be now there's just another large bucket that was used in the steel making process but down there you can clearly see where the huge water wheel used to sit that was used to drive the various machinery that was inside the steelworks and down here on the other side is probably where a very large hammer was situated that was driven by the water wheel to hammer steel billets and things like that right boys and girls the buildings that you can see behind me now were built round about 1750 but they've been in continuous use from then right through the industrial revolution in the 1800s and they're still being used now now during the industrial revolution they were used by a small group of people called the Little Mesters now <laughs> the term Little Mesters refers to individuals who use these workshops to manufacture high quality cutlery but especially hunting knives the Bowie knife which I'm sure you've all heard of especially associated with Jim Bowie and the Alamo over in America now this knife here was made for me by one of those little mesters 40 years ago it's got solid silver bolsters it was made by Worston Holmes in Sheffield but I'll show you this a little bit later so anyway that's where the little mesters 
used to make the famous Bowie knife and just out of interest if you wanted to buy one of the Bowie knives that they still make in there a 10 inch Bowie knife that's exported to America now would cost you a thousand dollars okay right I'll see you all later As you can see boys and girls, the river is still in flood and I am not going down there. Now in the distance you can see what's left of the old factories. Some have now been converted into very expensive apartments as I'm sure you can imagine. But that's where I did want to go down there but <laughs> not happening. <laughs> Now boys and girls, this is one of the old derelict factories that actually stands at the side of the river. Um, as you can see, there's nothing left of it much. All the roof's gone, all the rubble on the floor. Nothing much to see inside it at all really, apart from the odd bit of graffiti, I'm afraid. But, outside we can still see what's left of the old channels where the water was diverted to the water wheels and uh, I think round the corner is what's left of one of the old water wheels so we'll go and have a look at that now there's the old water wheel that I was talking about now I suspect that that one is probably from the early 1900s because the earlier ones were made out of wood um, but once again it's quite a substantial looking piece of equipment uh, you can see where the water was channeled from the main river into a little tributary to feed the water wheel uh, nothing much else to see just here apart from fallen trees and various bits of debris and obviously the old tyre thrown into the stream below me now it's actually quite interesting down here there's all sorts of little bridges and tunnels and all sorts of strange things. I don't know what they're for, or I don't know what they were used for. Um, but over in the distance, through the woods and the bushes just there, there's another building, so let's go and have a look at that. Well, there's the old building, boys and girls. I assume it was part of the old steelworks. It's all overgrown now and falling down. Uh, probably dates from the early 1800s, something like that. Uh, and I'm very close to the river now, uh, as you can see. Comes sweeping round the corner there and goes down into the distance. And there's just another example of how much rain we've had. A very, very fast flowing river. <laughs> very dangerous. And I'm not going any closer than this. Right boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that little run round one or two interesting things to look at and I don't mind telling you that it was absolutely Baltic out there, it was about minus five degrees and with the wind chill factor as well. Right, what we'll do now is get on with the draw for the giveaway. So I'll just adjust the camera so you can see what I'm doing on the computer. Okie dokie. Right boys and girls, here we are on the YouTube random comment picker. I've put in the URL for the video. So first of all we will filter duplicate users. Now we'll get the comments. Of which there are 79. And now, we will pick a winner. And the winner is MD Melbourne. Well done, Jim. Well, what a wonderful surprise. I don't know whether you've seen MD Melbourne, but he makes some very good videos, so give him a watch. Right, Jim, I'm not sure whether I've still got your address or not, but I will be in touch. And once again, well done, my friend. Okie dokie. Back to the video, boys and girls. 
Right, once again I'd like to say well done to Jim from MD Melbourne. Top bloke, I might add. As I said, I don't think I've still got your address, Jim, but I will be in touch. I don't know how long it will take in the post, but it will get to your part of the world eventually. Anyway, I just want to thank you all for joining me today. I've enjoyed it, even though it was freezing cold. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all next time round. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.